morning everyone and um, welcome to the second Saturday Club for Children here at Providence Chapel and it's uh, really good to see you all and uh, it's really good to be back here again and uh, we're starting early just so that people have a chance to join and uh, yes yeah, so I wonder how everyone's been doing this week now um, last week I um, showed you all something that I'd started crocheting and I didn't tell you what it was and I said that you had to guess and some people thought it was a bunny rabbit and my mum has been asking me all week what were you making Victoria what were you making Victoria I really want to know and I wouldn't tell her I told her that if she wanted to listen that if she wanted to know then she had to listen this morning so maybe if you're here you could let me know mum so that I can tell you what I've been making because I finished it um, but I haven't told her so um, I know at least one person has been very curious about that um, apart from that I wonder how your week's been um, I've had an interesting week I've actually been getting a bit frustrated I do a lot of work on the computer at the moment and um, I do a lot of work doing videos um, a bit like this um, and what happens is that people send me an email and they say, Victoria, we want you to come and join our video at this time and click on this link to do it. And I've been trying to do that and my emails haven't been working. So I haven't known what I've been doing. So I've had a bit of a frustrating week, but um, I hope you've had a good week. I know some children in England have gone back to school this week. I know that Josiah and Reuben went back to school this week. So boys, I hope it went well. And uh, I've been thinking and praying for you. And I don't know whether any other children have gone back to school. Not everyone has. I know some children are still staying at home. Um, I know that in Switzerland, the children have been back to school for a while now. And I know that in Switzerland, it's been very exciting this week because the church in Switzerland was able to meet in the church for the first time in weeks. And I hear that you had a really good time and... Uh, and that you were really pleased to be able to see each other again. So um, let's. I see that um, Irina and Sonia are here. Hello, Irina and Sonia. And uh, maybe Josiah and Reuben and Joel. Um, I don't know, boys, whether you've been able to join yet. But hello. Um, I know sometimes you watch a bit later. Um, but hello if you're here. And maybe Brandon and Jaden and Laylee, your cousins. I wonder if they're coming too. And then in London... We've got Isaac and Daniel and Luke and Noah. And I had a picture sent to me that Noah had done. Let's see if I can find it. This is Noah's picture. So um, he's done a lovely picture. And Noah, I wish that there were pink stars. I would love to live in a world where there were pink stars because I love pink. So I really like your picture. And then, oh, Josiah and Reuben, I forgot to show yours. Here they are. Here are Josiah and Reuben. So Reuben's is the top one. And uh, I really like, Reuben, that you've done the corn orange and the stars in yellow and the sun in orange. Because that shows you were really thinking about the colours that you used. And Josiah has obviously been doing very careful drawing of all the sheaves of corn and probably careful counting too. And he's drawn the stars all beautifully in a circle and the sun and the moon. So well done, Josiah. And then I had some other pictures sent to me. This one is Joffiel's. And I really like that Joffiel has coloured in Joseph's multicoloured coat so beautifully. And his corn, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Maybe if I hold it right up close. You can see just how carefully he's drawn the corn. So that was a really good drawing, Joffiel. And then Kate. Kate has done some fantastic colouring and multicoloured stars. I really like your style, Kate. I think multicoloured stars are cool. So thank you very much for your pictures. I really enjoyed seeing those and I'll be keeping those. I wonder who else might be joining us. I don't know if Michaela and Matthias are joining us from Switzerland and Jamie and baby Emily. And uh, then there's Nina and then there's Irina and Sonia. I see that they're joining. I wonder if your cousin in, in Indonesia, Michelle, might be joining Irina and Sonia or maybe she might watch later. I don't know. But hello, Michelle. I was very excited to hear about you watching. That's a new country, Indonesia. Um, 
I can't remember if I've said hello to Finley and Bethany in London. So in case I haven't, hello, Finley and Bethany. Um, and then I've said hello to Joffrey and Kate. And then in France, we've got Luke and Julia. Bonjour, comment ça va? Ça va bien? And then in India, I don't know if Paul is watching. Hello, Paul. And then all the way in Australia, are you ready for me to shout? Hello, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hope you're still watching from Australia. So hello, everybody. Now, I remember I was talking earlier about what I made last week. I wonder if anyone of you guessed what it was. Here it is. She's a giraffe. She's a giraffe. She's a bit of a funny colored giraffe because she's pink, but I like pink. And she's got pale pink spots all over her body and her name is Rosie. And she sits up here in my office and sometimes she comes to work meetings with me. And so far, my boss hasn't noticed that Rosie comes to work meetings with me. <laughs> it's really quite funny. I sit there holding her and he doesn't say anything. And this week, because since I finished Rosie, I've started on a new crochet project. I've been making some squares. I've made two and a half so far. But I've got two big balls of wool like this. And my church, the ladies in our church, are making squares to make blankets for people in Sri Lanka. Because we know that people in Sri Lanka, some of them don't have very much at all. So we're making blankets for, for people in Sri Lanka. We're going to make some big blankets for grown-ups. And we're going to make some little blankets for babies. And then they're going to get sent out to Sri Lanka to keep people nice and snuggled up and warm. So while I'm sitting in my warm house, I'm making these blankets for people who aren't so warm. So that's what I've been doing this week. Well, it's half past nine and that means it's time to start. So hello, everybody. And uh, I hope you've all been able to join. I can see there are nine people watching so far and we're going to start off by praying. So shall we put our hands together and close our eyes and we're going to pray to God. Dear God, thank you that you have kept us safe through another week. Thank you that you have been looking after us wherever we've been going. And Lord, thank you that we can meet together in Saturday Club. Help us to understand the lessons from the life of Joseph. Please speak to us and bless us. Amen. Right, we're going to start off by singing. Now, this is the one I always get stuck on. Is it my God is so wonderful? That doesn't sound, that's not, that is true, but that's not what we sing. Is it? My God is so powerful. Is that not right either? Let me have a look. Oh, my God is so big. How could I forget? My God is so big. Are you ready? My God is so big. See if you can say it so loud that I can hear it all the way here in Barnum. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Well, that was pretty good, but I'm not sure I quite heard you. Can you sing it again one more time? Are you ready? Take a deep breath <gasps> so that you've got lots of air in your body and let's sing it one more time. Are you ready? My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. I wonder if you know what the word handiwork means. When I was little, I didn't know what it meant. And I thought it was Andy work. 
and I used to wonder who Andy was and what work he'd been doing. But handiwork means that it's something that God made. And that's true, isn't it? God made the mountains and the rivers and the stars and everything in the world and in the whole universe was all made by God. So that's what it means when we sing the stars are his handiwork too. It means that God made the stars. And the Bible says that the stars are just the work of God's fingers. Now, God is a spirit, so he doesn't really have fingers. But what it means is that the stars, there are so many of them and they're so huge. But to God, it's just like he did that because God is so powerful. All he did was he spoke and everything was made. Right. Now, last week we learned a memory verse. And I wonder if you can remember what it was. And while you're thinking about it, I'm going to get it out because I forgot to get it ready. OK, let's see if we can find it. Here we are. This is our memory verse from last week. And we're going to keep on remembering this memory verse because this memory verse teaches us something very important about the life of Joseph. So although we'll have a new memory verse every week, we're going to keep coming back to this one. So it's, and the Lord was with Joseph. Can you do this again? And the Lord was with Joseph. And that's our first memory verse. And that was from Genesis 39 and verse 2. Now this week we've got a new memory verse. And again, it's from the Old Testament. This time it's from the Psalms. And it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And it's from Psalm 37, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And we've got some action, some sign language to help us learn it. So for rest, we're going to go like this. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do you think you can do that again? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And I thought it was really interesting that the sign for rest is to go like that with two hands, like you're telling someone to calm down, to rest. And then we make a wait is also a very calm and gentle sign. So I think that shows that the people who invented sign language were really thinking carefully. Shall we say it one more time? And this time I'm going to do the actions and I want you to try and say it with your mum and dad. Are you ready? Very good. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Now, I wonder if you're any good at making faces. Maybe your mummy and daddy tell you not to make faces at your brother and sister. I wonder if they do. But I'd like you to make some faces today to show me how you're feeling. So I want you to think about what kind of shape your face makes when you're feeling a certain way. So what happens to your face when you're happy? You smile. That's right. Can you all make a really big smile as if you're really, really happy? Yes. Wow, you all look so happy. That's really cheered me up. What about when you're sad? Can you make a sad face? Your mouth goes down. Maybe you blink because you're trying not to cry. Can you make a sad face? Oh, oh you, you better stop. You're making me feel sad too. Oh dear. Okay. What about when you're angry? When you're angry, you'll frown. You might clench your teeth. Maybe you put your hands into fists or fold your arms. You're angry. <gasps> Oh, it's a bit, a bit scary there. OK, OK, calm down, calm down. OK, right. Now, imagine if you've had a big surprise. What happens to your face then? <gasps> your mouth opens, your eyebrows go up in the air, your eyes are really wide. <gasps> I'm really 
be surprised. That's a brilliant surprised face. What about when you're frightened? What happens then? Maybe your hands go over your mouth. And your eyebrows go up in the air. And maybe you start to shake. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. There's nothing to be frightened about, really. Okay? We're just practicing. Right. Now, last of all, I'd like you to be calm. I'd like you to be calm. Your mouth might make a little smile. Your hands go into your lap. And you breathe in and out. In and out. There we go. I've just seen that Ryan is watching. Hello, Ryan, and hello, Sharon. That's really good. Right, now, in our story today, we're going to hear about some angry men. We're going to hear about someone who might have been frightened. <laughs> But who was calm instead? And someone who was sad. So get those faces ready because you're going to need them in our story. OK, now before we hear our story, we're going to sing a song. And we're going to sing our song, Come and Hear the Tale of Joseph. Now, I've made my Come and Hear the Tale of Joseph into a lovely book. And every week I'm going to give your mum and dad another page for the book and maybe if you want to you can stick it into a book too or if not you can just use the, use the sheets whichever you want to do okay so it's come and hear the tale of joseph and remember we sing each the first line three times it's really easy come and hear the tale of joseph come and hear the tale of joseph come and hear the tale of joseph and what god did for him but today we're going to learn a new verse okay and the next verse tells us about Joseph's brothers. Now, if you remember from last week, can you remember how many brothers Joseph had? That's right. He had 11 brothers. So it says to remind us, Joseph had 11 brothers. Joseph had 11 brothers. Joseph had 11 brothers who really hated him. OK, so we're going to sing that. Are you ready? Come and hear the tale of Joseph. Come and hear the tale of Joseph. Come and hear the tale of Joseph and what God did for him. Joseph had eleven brothers. Joseph had eleven brothers. Joseph had eleven brothers who really hated him. Shall we sing that one more time? Let's see if you can remember the verse we learnt last week and the verse from new week from this week. Are you ready? Come and hear the tale of Joseph. Come and hear the tale of Joseph. Come and hear the tale of Joseph and what God did for him. Joseph had eleven brothers. Joseph had eleven brothers. Joseph had eleven brothers who really hated him. And we'll be finding out what Joseph's brothers did because they hated him in just a minute. Now, in Saturday Club, all of our stories come from the Bible. And I wonder if you can remember how many books are in the Bible. Was it 10? No. Was it 20? No. If you remember, can you say it nice and loud? It was 66. 66 books in the Bible. I've got to make sure I get this up the right way around. Here are all of the 66 books in the Bible. There's a lot, aren't there? All different colours. And we're having a story from this book in the Bible, from Genesis, the first book in the Bible. But the 66 books tell one big story, the story of God's plan to send Jesus. And I'm going to read part of the story from you, for you today, and it comes from Genesis chapter 37.
Right. And Israel said to Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to them, Here am I. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, and see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell thee, I pray thee, where they feed thy flock, their flock. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dotham. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to slay them. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Let Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast has devoured him. And we will see what shall become of his dreams. Now, Today we're going to carry on learning about Joseph. The Bible tells us about things that happened to Joseph. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. But the important thing is that like we learnt last week in our memory verse, the Lord was with Joseph and whatever happened, God was with him. Now, do you remember that last week we talked about even though Joseph was born thousands of years before Jesus, of, Jesus was alive, Joseph's life is like a sign that points to Jesus. Last week we learnt that Joseph loved God and that he obeyed God and that when God gave Joseph a message, Joseph told everyone about that message. And those things are also true of Joseph, of Jesus. Do you remember how God gave Joseph his messages? Did God send Joseph a letter? No. Did Joseph read them in a book? No. God sent Joseph a message in dreams because at that time the Bible hadn't been written. They didn't even have one book of the Bible, much less 66. So God gave Joseph a dream and Joseph dreamt two dreams, which meant that one day his brothers would rule over him. And because of this, Joseph's brothers hated him. Can you make your angry face again? <clears throat> they really hated Joseph. They were angry. Now, we read in the Bible just now that one day, Joseph, Jacob, Joseph's father, sent Joseph to look for his brothers. He wanted to know how they were doing. They were away from home looking after the sheep. And Jacob said to Joseph, go and find your brothers. I think they're in Shechem. Find out how they are and come back and tell me. So Joseph got ready to go to Shechem to look for his brothers. And he set off and it was quite a long journey. But when he got to Shechem, he couldn't find his brothers. They weren't there. But someone found Joseph and he said, oh, I think your brothers are in Dotham. So Joseph went a bit further away from home to get to Dotham to find his brothers. Now, while they, as Joseph was coming, his brothers saw him coming. Remember, Joseph had a lovely multicoloured coat, so he would have been easy to spot. And Joseph's brothers saw him coming when he was far off. And all of those angry feelings and all of that hatred came bubbling up. And they said to each other, look, here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him. And then we'll see what happens to his dreams that he had. What a terrible thing to do. The brothers were so angry and so full of hatred, they planned to kill their own brother. One of their brothers wasn't quite so angry. His name was the na sa na same as someone who's listening. His name was Reuben. 
Yes, Reuben, your name is in the Bible. His name was Reuben. And he said, don't kill him. Look, there's a pit over there. Just throw Joseph into the pit. And Reuben was thinking that later on he would go back to the pit when his brothers were asleep and rescue Joseph. And the brothers thought, that's a good idea. We'll throw our brother Joseph into a pit. So when Joseph came near, they grabbed him. They tore off his beautiful multicolored coat and they threw Joseph into the pit. How do you think Joseph felt? Do you think he was frightened? Make that frightened face. Well, maybe he was, but the Bible doesn't tell us that Joseph was frightened. And it doesn't tell us that Joseph was angry either. And that makes me think that Joseph was calm. Can you make that calm face? And I think that Joseph was calm because he knew that the Lord was with him. I think that Joseph was calm, even though he was in the pit with all of his angry brothers standing around. I think that he was calm. What do you think the brothers did next? I don't think you're going to believe this because they sat down and had dinner. Their brother was in a pit. They were angry with him. They planned to kill him. And the Bible says that they sat down and had something to eat. They didn't care about Joseph at all. They didn't care that he was in a big, deep pit with no water and no way of getting out. All they cared about was their food. And I think that maybe as they sat down, they were saying, well, what should we do with Joseph now he's in the pit? How are we going to get our revenge on Joseph? Well, just then they saw some Ishmaelites riding by. And these were people who were on their way to Egypt to sell things. And Judah, one of the brothers, said, let's sell Joseph to those Ishmaelites. So they sold Joseph to be a slave for 20 pieces of silver. When Reuben found out what his brothers had done, he was surprised. Can you make your surprised faces? He said, what am I going to do? You sold Joseph to be a slave. What am I going to tell our father? But the brothers made a plan. They tore Joseph's coat up and they killed a goat and they dipped Joseph's coat in the blood. Then they took the coat back to Jacob. And they said, we found this coat. Is it Joseph's? Poor Jacob was so sad. Can you make your sad face? He was so sad. He thought that Joseph, his favourite son, was dead. He was so sad. The Bible says that no one could comfort him. And the brothers were so full of anger and hatred that none of them told him the truth. None of them said that Joseph was still alive. They didn't care about anything else. Now, remember, the Bible says that Joseph's life points us to Jesus. Well, I wonder if you can help me spot some clues. I think maybe, particularly if there are older brother, children here who know the Bible well, maybe children like Sonia who are a bit older or mums and dads, they might be able to help you with these because we're going to see if we can work out how Joseph's life in this part of our story points to Jesus. So have you got your yes, no cards? Yes, no and yes. Right. I need to hold them right way up. Not like that. Like that. Right. OK. Joseph's brothers hated him because of the message that he had from God. Did the Jews hate Jesus because of the message he had from God? Yes or no? What do you think? Did the Jews hate Jesus because of the message he had from God? That's right. Yes, the Jews hated Jesus because of the message that he had from God. Joseph's brothers planned to kill him because they hated him so much. Did the Jews plan to kill Jesus because they hated him so much? What do you think? Yes or no? Did the Jews hate Jesus because... 
they hated him so much, did they plan to kill him? Yes, they did. The Jews hated Jesus so much that they made plans to kill him. Joseph's brothers sold Joseph to be a slave for 20 pieces of silver. Did one of Jesus' friends betray him for 20 pieces of silver? Yes or no? Did one of Jesus' friends betray him for 20 pieces of silver? Well, actually, that's a trick question because the answer is no. Jesus wasn't betrayed for 20 pieces of silver. He was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. But one of Jesus' friends did take money to betray him. Now, Joseph's brothers didn't actually kill him in the end. Did the Jews actually kill Jesus? Yes or no? They did. Yes, Jesus died on the cross, but he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven for all of the bad things that we have done and the times we've broken God's good laws. And it was part of God's wonderful plan to save us. So although Jesus did die, it was part of God's plan. But Joseph points us to Jesus because he was hated for his message from God, because his brothers made plans to kill him, and because he was sold as a slave for silver coins. Now, remember, in all of our story, the Bible doesn't say that Joseph was frightened or that he got angry. And I think that this is because Joseph was trusting in God and because Joseph knew that God was with him. And when God is with us, we don't need to be frightened or angry or scared, no matter how scary things are. Because God is with us. Joseph did what our new memory verse says. He rested in God and waited patiently for him. Right, we're going to pray now. So put your hands together again and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you that you were with Joseph. Thank you that even though some scary things happened to Joseph, you were with him. Thank you that you are with us too and that you have a plan for our lives. Help us to trust you. Amen. Right, now, I heard that there are some older children watching this who would like some, maybe some puzzles and things to do. So I've got two things for you to do this week. The first one for older children, I've made some puzzle sheets where there are questions about the story that we've just had about Joseph and then there are Bible verses to unscramble that tell us something about Jesus. So there's one, two, three. So older children if you want to do those and then if your mum and dad wants to take a photo or scan them in and send them back to me and then for younger children I've got a craft for you to do. Now, you've got two sheets. This one, I don't know if you can read it, it says Joseph in the pit. And this is your sheet you're going to be sticking things on. And then you'll need some colouring pencils or some pens, some scissors, some glue, and a piece of cardboard, maybe a bit of a cereal box. Doesn't need to be a special piece of cardboard. And you need another sheet. And here's Joseph, and here's the pit. And what I want you to do is cut out all around the pit and around Joseph, colour them in and then fold back these flaps and stick it down onto the piece of paper to make a pit for Joseph to go in. And then your Joseph puppet needs to go on your strip of cardboard. And as a television show I used to watch when I was little says, here's one I made earlier. So here's my Joseph in the pit. I've coloured in the writing and I don't know if you can see what I've done. I've stuck my pit I've made a bit of a gap so that I can stick things under it. And then when I did my colouring in, I thought it would be good to colour all over the pit. So I've done the grass on top and then the earth underneath because the pit would have gone down. And here's my Joseph. Now, of course, Joseph wasn't wearing his multicoloured coat anymore. So this week you don't need to do a multicoloured coat. So I can put Joseph in the pit. And then... 
take him out of the pit to be taken away as a slave. OK, so I would like you to do that your craft that week. And again, if your mums and dads want to take a picture of your colouring and show it to me, that would be lovely so that I can share it with you next week. Right now we've got two minutes and we're going to sing Jesus Love is Very Wonderful. Now I'm going to have to be careful here because I need to stand up and I haven't got much space in my office. So I'm going to move my chair out of the way. As you can see, I have a nice pink chair. I like pink and I'm going to stand up because in Jesus Love is Very Wonderful, it's so high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. And so wide, you can't get round it. OK, are you ready? Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Shall we sing that one more time? And this time I'll try not to bump my hip on my chair. Now I'll move it out the way so I've got a bit more space. You ready? Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. You ready? So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Right, well, thank you very much for joining us for this week's Saturday Club for Children. And we'll be glad to see you again next week at half past nine. And remember, if there's anyone new watching, if you send me a message with your email address, I'll email you out the activities before next week. And please do send me back your pictures and things. I really look forward to it because I work on my computer all day. So it's really nice to have something different come into my emails that isn't work. So it would be lovely to see your pictures and look forward to seeing all of you next week. Bye bye.